Hey guys, Praetorian Titan and I are here talking to Carrie Allen, Community Manager for Gala Games. So let's get into it. All right. Well, guys, first, thank you so much for letting me come on the show today. I'm excited to be a guest of yours. Uh, I enjoy you guys around our Discord and stuff. So, all right. About me, I'm awesome. I mean, that should be clear. Uh, as far as Gala Games, I started working for them in March. Yes, that M word. Uh, and beginning of March, I started working. Before that, I was kind of helping out doing some other stuff. I was found because I work for Splinterlands uh, as well, which is a blockchain game. And before that, I did music festival planning for about two to 3,000 people and other event plannings and things like that. Super fun. And I think it kind of got me into how and why I'm good at the things that I do here. Specifically for Gala, I am the assistant to the Bitbender or Jason Brink, as you guys probably know, the CMO of Gala. I do whatever he needs me to do. And then other things, if he needs me to do that as well. And I also am the community manager. So I hang out a lot in Discord answering questions, being the liaison between the community and the main part of the team, making sure that everybody is up to speed on things and that nothing is catching on fire and that everyone is just generally happy people. So yeah, I have my fingers in a lot of little different projects and things. You definitely have an awesome personality. Uh, the tone of everything on Discord and from what I've seen has totally changed. It went from very uh, cautious and very uh, almost dry uh, static answers and you brought a ton of personality and I think that that is a huge part of uh, the late, later success that we have here. Uh, that we've seen in Discord and bringing people in. So with that being said, uh, that personality coming into, for lack of a better way to put it, kind of a startup, how, how did that play into how you approach what you do daily? Um, I kind of just fell into that. When I was first approached by Gala Games uh, to become part of the team, for one, I was just downright excited and like I felt really honored. I I knew about Gala. I'd been working with Gala via my Splinterlands job and partnering up with our as play to earn pals in the blockchain crypto gaming space. And I I wasn't really sure what I was going to do aside from help Bitbender or Jason Brink, the CMO, um, because like as the as Gala, the organization as a whole just grows and gets bigger. One of the things that we really do focus on is trying to uh, make copies of ourselves so that as we grow, we we aren't <laughs> we are overkill and working ourselves to death. And like I do feel like and I'm sure Jason and then many others do, too, that we do work a lot, but still it doesn't feel like work because we really enjoy it. And of course we're making games. And so the first rule of Gala Games, and it gets repeated at our, our weekly meetings often, is that we're supposed to be having fun. We're, we're making games. We're, games are supposed to be fun. It's a playtime. And so if you're not having fun, we're doing something wrong and we need to switch it up. So when I was first brought in, um, it was kind of a surprise that they were, but they were titling me community manager. And I just was like, okay, well, what does that look like? So I basically just showed up in discord. Uh, and I, first I started playing Townstar, the only currently playable game on Gala games. And it's pretty fun. Actually, it is a bit of a time suck. So I don't have a lot of time to play, but I did play for quite a few hours, like a couple of times, just so I could get my my head around what it was. And so I can answer questions and just help people out, understand their frustrations. And then I just kind of threw myself in and I made sure that, oh, I read everything. So like the first month or so, I caught up on the Discord all the way back to January. So I went back into every single channel so that I could see what the problems were, what the gripes were, what the happiness was, what people, what made people please, what made them not pleased, and and also just seeing the community. Like, so I wanted to know who was around and who's been around since this time. And then I started keeping track of all the suggestions for Townstar, for the website. Um, and these were things that I just decided that I should do because I really 
I really wanted to make Gala the best that it could be. And if they were like, okay, you're now managing this. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm pretty good at being a self-starter and just figuring things out. And really quickly, I just fell in love with the Gala community. Like I've been a part of a lot of different Discord communities, a lot. And by far, the people here are just... I love them. Like, I know it sounds like really silly. And I'm sure everybody that's in their own community says that about their own community. And you should like, that's how you should really feel if you're if you're feeling good. But I really feel like the Gala community, they're like the creme de la creme of humans just in general. And like, of course, people get salty. But that's that's happens because you care about something and you want to know the answers and you want to be able to make sure that it's doing well. So like the more angry people get, you know that the more they care. And so I remember that. And so I'm able to just approach them and with really just good understanding. And yeah, I just love it. I love well, it. Well, it has. I mean, it, it's almost seamless uh, with adding so many people and bringing you on board and, and with you taking charge like you have it. It really appeared seamless. How, how did you do that? Um, I think I just snuck my way in. Like I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty comfortable of just popping my nose in and being helpful. Like my nature has always been from a, like a customer service, like a literally a serving kind of way. And I've said that since I was a wee one, like I, I've always liked helping. I've always like being that person that can be like, oh, I can help you do this. Oh, I can do that. Oh, I can set that up. Oh, let me help you do that. And so I've, and like, even my email is Carrie Allen for you. And it's 20 some years old because I've had it forever. So like I've always had that mentality of I just want everybody to be able to be happy and be friends. And I know it sounds just it sounds silly, but it is very tr true for me that I, I really do. I do think that everybody can get along as long as everybody understands. And then and as long as, you know, we can all play nice. And I don't even when things get a little hot in discord or something like that. I feel like I'm pretty good at calming people down and like just bringing people back to realize that, you know, we're not, we're not here to attack each other. Even if we get frustrated, we're here to make this thing grow. And yeah, I felt like I kind of just did a, like you said, I did a pretty good job of just sneaking into the chats. And if I didn't know the answer to something, then I would go find it. And then I would come back in and I'd be like, oh, I have the answer now. Or I like, and at first, that first month, it was a little hard because I didn't really know anything. Like I didn't, I really didn't know. Like I, people would ask questions. I'd be like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> and so I would have to go search and find. Um, and then I started trying to make sure that like things were pinned in the channel. So it was easier for other people to find the answers that I also couldn't find at first. And eventually, I don't know, I feel like now people know that I'm there and I'm there definitely to help. And I will answer you guys like normally I answer people within just a few minutes, but I try to answer everybody within like 12 hours. We are in different time zones a lot of times. So sometimes I sleep. Um, mm -hmm. How does I, I know I've I've heard. I've heard that you are actually involved with uh, the Splinterlands community as well. Um, mm -hmm. How are how are they different than the Splinterlands community, for example, or another community that you've you've worked with? So I would say that the main difference is probably um, just general like activity slash support. So like in and it's also I think because we're larger at Gala Games. So right now there's uh, almost 30,000 people in our Gala Games Discord. We're in the Splinterlands Discord. There's about 7,000. So considerably different. So if you take the percentage and this works across the board on on all social media, um, whenever you have like, for instance, if you have 30,000 Twitter followers, then you're probably only going to see Maybe if you're super lucky and they're very active people, 10, one to 10% of those people actually interacting on your post. Same thing um, in any kind of social media situation. Don't know why it is. That's just what it happens. So I would say that there are, I don't know, maybe it's because the, the Gala Games is more new and we have like a lot more people who are like just coming to invest in this huge, huge project. The idea of like, this is going to be something forever for everybody, not just one game, um, which Splinterlands is one game. And um, with that, 
And I wasn't a huge part of the Splinterlands community on Discord. My thing there was the Hive community slash it used to be Steam. And so mostly I deal with uh, the curation projects and that side of the community because they have their own community managers there. So I would just notice that in Gala, questions get asked and like the whole community comes forward to answer like 20 people will come and try to help you and it's very it's similar in splinterlands but just a little bit less than that and i find that sometimes it can get really salty over there um while it does get salty in gala i've seen a lot of salt i've seen a lot of salt in the other discords and the same thing in like another discord that i used to run called helpy uh, obviously because i like to help things um things would get crazy in there too and so even with like a really good group of people, it's just, I, I don't know. I think it's the idea of the forward thinkingness of the Gala Games community as a whole. Um, and like we were kind of talking about before we started, we pushed play on this thing. Um, people are really investing in an idea and the future of gaming when they, they come and they join the Gala community. And of course we have people who are just in it to play and just in it to earn. And that's great too. But there's that huge chunk of people, um, the node owners, as well as, you know, people who maybe aren't able to have a node right now, but they still, they want to be here for the ride and they want to be here and they just want to be supportive of something new that is really, really awesome for the people. And I can feel that, like I can feel they're not in it just for themselves. They're not in it just because they might make, money later or something like that but they're in it for like the whole and you can tell like i i feel like i can tell like i i feel like there's a lot of support when we get open sea fakes i can like drop a link in the gold chat and like a ton of people will report it and boom it gets it gets smashed instantly and like that kind of like interaction and just ability to be around and available i think it's really it's a little harder to come by in other places and they're in other places they do exist they're just less less of them well with with that success and discord and how the community comes together uh, i totally agree with you and it, we know that things are amping up almost uh, exponentially on a daily basis how, how how are you guys approaching that i mean with the over the next 12 months, you know, we've heard so many things in AMAs and in Discord about all this stuff coming up. How are you managing all those expectations? So a big, that's a really great question. Um, and one that I don't know that we really get across quite enough, but with our right now 51 employees of Gala, within that community of people or employees that we have. Um, a chunk of those people work on Townstar, a chunk of those people work on Mirandas, and then the rest are like overall gala employees like myself. Now, when, when people are like, how are you going to do 10 games by the end of the year? Well, what we're doing, because we're a gaming platform, is we are partnering um, with other companies that already exist. They already have artists. They already have developers. They already have a game thing going. So when we say we have these other games coming in, there's a whole other team that is already working on these other games. And that is not taking away from the time that, that the gala employees are actually doing. Um, on top of that, at, when you ask 12 months from now, we are probably going to be looking to just our gala team being doubled or maybe tripled in size by that time because we are expanding at such a quick rate and we will need a lot of help to really be getting that going. So we are looking to expand very quickly. But um, like, for instance, um, the space game, Empires of... Man, there's so many games in my brain. So the space game that they'll be going to a node vote soon uh that has they have their own team uh, like there's nobody that is employee of gala that is the specifically working on that that is just something that we check in they get their stuff done and it's that's how that's going to work in the future for any of our platform games and and the, again the node vote that i mentioned uh, how that's going to work is if we are going to reach out or eventually it'll be more decentralized that would be the end goal is that anybody could reach out and say, hey, I have this game. It's really awesome. I would really love it to be on the Gala Games platform. And then we would be able to put that to a node vote. And then the node owners would be able to say, yeah, that game sounds good. Let's do it. And then in a totally decentralized fashion, that game would then become part of our ecosystem. And like we would kind of, you know, the main Gala people who are now, you know, actively going out and seeking these things, that part 
would be, you know, passed along to another part of our jobs in the future. So I really think that I think it's I think it's again, like I'm excited about it because I love the idea of how everything is going to be coming together. And we are so early in it that it is hard to give like full concrete answers about how things will work. But yeah, the long and short of it is our gala employees we mostly focus on gala, growing gala, growing the ecosystem, getting um, more information out, and really right now at this point, finding more games to bring onto the platform. And then those games already have their own teams of people behind them. So there's like uh, that new game that's coming up. I think there's like 20 people on their team working. So like they are substantially, you know, good little businesses that are already running and getting things going. So I understand people are like, how do you have people time to work? And I'm like, well, we're doing our own things and then they're doing their things and we're all doing it together. So is, is Gala Games managing these other teams or are they just interfacing with them? And I'll ask a, a second part of this question because a lot of people on the uh, yeah. CryptoFast Discord have been interested. They're like, well, if I have a game, how can I get my game in there? I'm thinking that Gala has some sort of coordination role right now, but later, maybe eventually it won't be. It'll just be. It's not huge coordination. So um, really, it's just kind of more like what you said, interfacing. So and, and this has been stated before. We don't gala or node holders don't really and won't really have a say in mechanics of a certain game that we're going to bring on the platform. The basic way is going to be like, yes, we vote this game in as is or not. So we don't tell them your game should have this, this, and this. Now, if they ask and they're like, hey, what would be cool if we added this? Of course, then we, we offer insight and things like that. But as it stands, the current games that are being worked on that are um, outside the main employee sect of that, so outside of Miranda's and Townstar, uh, they get to make their own games and they get to do their own thing. And then once we uh, get enough going on that, then like soon we'll be doing an AMA for the space game. Then the node owners will get to be like, yeah, that sounds cool. Or no, I hate it. And then they'll get to put their vote up and they'll get to decide if that gets to join the ecosystem or not. But we don't um, and there won't ever be, at least that's what I have been seeing happening. We won't ever be taking creative rights away from these game makers. Um, as uh, the other part of your question, for how can I add a game here? We do have a mm, channel in, I th think it's just called, I want to submit a game or something like that in discord. Let me, yeah, I want to bring a game to gala. Um, people can put a little note in there. You can also reach out to me or Bitbender, and we can like put that through as well. Um, yeah. So they're eventually like right now we're taking on more big projects that we can like kind of really help move through and then in the future it should just be all really easy like they will in my brain <laughs> it will be like an easy way like via a website where you can submit your game your idea an, an upload of like how to play if it's in playable mode and then the node owners will get this information and be able to vote it in or vote it out of the system so gala won't be a part of this then that decision making it will be only up to the node owners Correct. So that is the in-game goal is that it's fully decentralized and the community gets to decide on things and we will be able to step back. Like I saw, I wonder if I could find the exact quote, but I saw Bitbender say something super cute um, in one of the channels the other day, kind of explaining this, saying that like, so his wife is pregnant, so he's got baby on the brain, but he kind of explained Gala as like a little infant. And like right now we're kind of showing it how to walk. But eventually it's going to be able to walk on its own and it's not going to really need us anymore. And so that's kind of what we're looking at as like the full future of things. I thought that was a really cute way to explain it. I'd like to kind of switch directions a little bit. Uh, we talked about this a little bit. I want to get into the NFT aspect of Gala Games. Uh, I know mm -hmm. that just about everything in Mirandus, and I don't know about Townstar, but I know Mirandus, every, just about everything is intended to be an NFT and the game will be largely run by that. But the first thing I'm going to do is relate this to how you work with the team and about how you manage expectations with, you know, the, the fans. People pay for these NFTs, and they seem to think that they have an investment in the company when they do, or that they have an investment in the game uh, if it isn't the company, or that they have an investment in the direction of, of how things go. Uh, this is something that I've seen on the Discord before, 
And I was wondering if, if you can give some comments there as to how Gala approaches this. So I, I would say that as far as the investment word, what this is more than anything is Gala Games, like I said, is it's a platform for gaming in the future. And because we're going to make it decentralized, the first step in, in having your say in anything would be node ownership. And then, of course, running the node to be able to do that. Um, but as far as like purchasing anything else, it is the same as any other game or project or anything else like that. Like think of it um, you know, I'd say Kickstarter, but most of the time there's like some kind of physical item that they give you <laughs> when you do a Kickstarter. But you you may or may not lose like what you put in. Like I'm not saying anything will be bad, but there's there's no there's no promise of investment or anything like that. Um, we are working on the games like for Mirandis and of course Townstar. Um, Townstar, there are NFTs for, but and this is as far as I understand, it will be across the board on all games will be free to play, which means you will not be required to have any sort of NFT. But just like in most other games, if or at least a lot of them now, you can purchase things to level yourself up quicker rather than grinding your way to a certain point. So then you might be able to advance faster if you do put money into it. But the games will always have a free to play aspect. So currently Townstar definitely has that. Um, the times that I've played, I haven't played with any NFTs. It's still enjoyable. Did I make it very high up in the ranks? Absolutely not. Um, but um, I probably could if I got better at it. So I would say as far as like, again, the investment turn, we we are not we are not supposed to be looked at as any kind of investment. Um, more so, we should be looked at as a community of people who believe in this new project and the decentralization and ability to like have your voice heard and a vote heard. So when people are purchasing, you know, an avatar or something like that for, or like they're the exemplars, I guess, for Mirandas, um, you can, you can be pretty sure that you're going to be able to play with said exemplar inside the Mirandas place. Um, and you might be able to sell it on OpenSea later because everything is free. So what we are offering is that you own that, you own that thing. So you buy it, you own it, you decide you don't want it anymore. You decide, Psh, I'm out. I just want to go play my old school Game Boy that I found in my garage yesterday and it still works. So I'm going to do this instead. You can sell that. You can put that on OpenSea and sell it to somebody else because it's something that you own. So I would say that, yes, there are tons and tons of questions about this, but we are, that is just not at all what we are looking to be. We are looking to be a gaming platform of, I guess, so funny to say, but of the future where everybody gets a say and everybody gets to own their things and you're in control of it. We're well, not in control of those things. We don't control how much it's going to be worth. We don't control how, how good it's going to be. Like we're just making the product so that you can use them. Well, some of these NFTs are, are really expensive and, you know, I can, I can see For why sure. when somebody spends, I'll just say a whole lot of money, uh, you know, a mm thousand -hmm. or two thousand dollars for an NFT how they get it that, that they would personally feel invested like hey you guys are going to support this right you know i i want to make sure that this you know that this was a good buy for me yeah of course and that that totally makes sense and again it goes to back to that's the same for anything so when you put a lot of money in something um I look like I think it was like yesterday or the day before in the discord chats people were having this argument um regarding the term investment and it came down to it was amusing to me is people they were like well you can say that the hot dog that i ate for lunch today is an investment in my health or you know not so much um and i that's just not the correct usage of the word at that point so from like a legal standpoint and taxes and all of those things um we are definitely not an investment in that way and of course like people are going to feel like yes this is something that i am you know maybe investing in but it's just simply not the correct terminology and how we look at it legally on paper like literally just basically mumbo jumbo of that kind of that side kind of thing where people are like well i use this word all the time and i'm like you do use that word all the time but you don't use it correctly or not in the same sense that we use it. And it's the same idea, I guess, as the word literally, which 
literally gets used all the time in places literally. where it should not be used. Um, and so I try to explain it to people and some people, they're just not going to get it. And that's totally fine too. And I understand putting a ton of money into something and then, and saying that it is an investment. But the biggest thing is, is there's, there's nothing that we can do for gala games aside from, you know, keep our promises to create this game that we're making um, that is going to make that $2,000 go higher or go lower or anything like that. Our goal isn't to give anyone any returns on anything. Our goal is to make games and make an ecosystem that we can like all share and actually own our products in. So it's like you're, you're, you're putting something and and you're like hey I really I believe in this good luck and you're kind of donating that into this idea so that we can really get the things going and in the end it might be super good for you but again it's not something that we are focusing on the main focus of gala games has always been the ecosystem and getting this going across the board um, rather than anything else. And as again, a reminder, they can sell their things after they get them and sometimes for more. So at least they have that option. I love that that option is there too. Well, with, with people looking at the NFTs in that manner, uh, mm -hmm. do you think that that helps Gala Games move ahead? Or do you think that that's going to end up ultimately come back to biting Gala Games because people are going into this without fully understanding what all this means. Yes, that happens all the time in this space. Um, and I had mentioned before we started pressing record that I think a lot of that has to do with like the fault of crypto Twitter, where this is a new area to everybody. And everybody thinks that it, like, well, not everybody, but there are some in the boat that are like, this is a get rich quick scheme. And those people are always going to exist. They're going to be the people who are not going to do their research. They're going to just try to do something quickly. They're going to be like, oh, this is the next big thing. I'm going to do this right now. And then they're going to be salty if something doesn't work. Like it makes me think of BitConnect, <laughs> BitConnect, which was uh, something that happened a few years ago where it totally ended up being a scam. And like a lot of people made hella money and a lot of people lost a lot of money. And so it really comes down to we will be as informative as possible and as clear as clear as possible about what our intentions are and that we are a game publisher and then a game creator for Townstar and Miranda's and possibly another in the future. But for now, those are the two main ones that we'll be producing. Um, and that everybody is supposed to educate themselves. Like the big rule is do your own research. Like get as much information you can make the decisions for yourself. No one is forcing anybody to do anything. No one is forcing someone to go in and buy an NFT for a game that's not out yet. That's worth two grand. No one does that. Like you are making that decision as an adult. And of course you can be salty later if you decide that you hate it or it's been six plus months and you wanted it now, well, at least you have the option to sell it if that's how you feel about things. But I always put it back on the responsibility of the person. And I feel like Gala Games does a pretty good job at being pretty transparent and like answering questions to make people have as much information that we have so that you guys can make that good decision for yourselves. And um, in crypto, as in like gambling, as in life in general, don't spend more than you have. Well, I get the it. sense that um, a lot of people getting into crypto now and getting into NFTs now are new. And yeah. I think there's a lot of young people and there's a lot of new people and there's a lot of people that just do not understand some fundamentals of crypto. They think of it literally as a number go up or if you get an NFT, they just think of it as a little treasure that then they can mm -hmm. cash in later. And I think that has a lot to do with it, you know, buying game assets and buying other NFTs, art NFTs or music NFTs, they're 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 like, hey, I just want to be able to get money for this. Somebody said that I have the title to this drawing and it's mine now. And you know, I, I think they really don't understand NFTs as much. I, I think that might right. play into it. I agree a hundred percent. And I think we're gonna run into it a lot 
a lot more and a lot faster now because crypto NFTs and things like that, they are hitting the mainstream. Like, uh, I want to say like a month and a half ago or something, SNL did a pretty hilarious music video about NFTs. I'm not sure if you guys saw that. If not, you should look it up because it's funny. Um, but just knowing that like SNL is putting that out to their audience who are, as I call them, normies or people who are not into crypto and uh, blockchain technology yet, um, more and more people are wondering about it and they're seeing it. Uh, when I got into it uh, like six years ago, I didn't know anything about stocks either. Like I had not been a trader or anything like that. And what I ended up using crypto for at that time were um, I, I got into like little altcoins and my basic understanding very quickly, because I do a a crap ton actual amount of research on things before I do anything at all, like a, an embarrassing amount of research. Um, I found that the point of crypto, which is the opposite of what you have described and what many people think that it is, like what you're saying, people are like, they just don't understand. And they think that they have this NFT that's going to magically gain value or a coin or a token that is magically going to gain value. What I learned really early on is you don't you don't put your money into those things in hopes to get more money out. You put your money into places that are having projects that you think are going to be awesome. So the original idea, um, aside from just Bitcoin being the first one, uh, and of course, its use case being able to be a currency and actual money, the altcoins, they started basically making it possible so that projects didn't have to go through to get loans from a bank to start their project and do things so they could make a token and then they could like essentially crowdfund and get that money so they could continue their project. And so I would look up projects that I thought was cool. I would not pay any attention to the markets on the crypto, um, like uh, different charts of things going up and down. Like that wasn't of interest to me. I would put money in places where I was like, oh, well, that's a really good idea. I think that is a real, that's so awesome. And so then I would, you know, quote, buy their token. Um, and then I'd just be holding that token in hopes that they would be able to use that and be able to gain more momentum on their project. And that project would take off. Did everything that I put money into take off and become awesome? No, it did not. <laughs> did I lose? <laughs> yes, I did. But see, I, I didn't get salty about that because I understand that that is the world that it's in. And I was able to educate myself in a way that I understood that I was taking those risks and it wasn't up to anybody else to do that for me. And I understand that a lot of people, especially in current year, um, they don't feel like they have to take responsibility for anything. And I don't think that that is a very good adulty way to be. You should take responsibility for yourself and you can't just blame everybody else for your decisions that you make. So I hope my goal, and it's always been this, is to try to be able to get that across to more people, that the crypto tokens and the different altcoins, they're, they're there to help projects grow and help these new ideas go without people having to go through a ton of paperwork, uh, depending on what country you're in, to be able to get enough money to move forward and to actually make your project something and bring it off the ground. I, I think you're spot on with that. Um... And we're talking about all these things that leads directly into that expectation standpoint. So mm -hmm. we, we've heard uh, that it's possible that like Fortified could come out uh, before Mirandus. And yes, there's a lot of hype. Cool. There's, yeah, there's, there's a ton of hype around all of this. And expectations from the gaming community are like through the roof at this point. So how is the team managing those expectations? Is there pressure there? Are they handling it okay? What if there's hiccups along the way? What, what are they doing to prepare to meet those expectations? So for now, there are, um, we're keeping in contact with the the production um, teams that are working on that. So like you mentioned, Fortified, um, that is still, planning to come out before Mirandas, which Mirandas is like very, very early alpha. We're hoping like in the year, some stuff will be out to play. And of course, Mirandas will continue to grow um, for people who may be listening that aren't really into the alpha beta stages of things. Uh, basically, that just means like it's going to be dropped in like, you know, people get to play it. There's still going to be bugs. We're still going to be adding more 
things and more events. And it's going to be a big growing thing. Miranda's is a huge, huge beast of, of, of an MMR. MMORPG. And so it's going to be coming out in little chunks. But as for Fortified, which is a tower defense game, that is still on track as far as I know um, since the last time that I heard the update from them to be getting released in the next few months here. And if something does happen, um, I, I think like, again, we talked a little about before we push play, when you first come into this, this space and this gaming space, um, you may not understand that like coding takes a minute and it doesn't always work out. And you can make a guess on a deadline of how long something's going to take. And you can be just off, like straight up wrong. And like you could run into something where you're like, I thought I could do this and I can't. So what? now we're stuck on this. And for I know. <laughs> Most projects <laughs> like, don't go over budget and, and uh, over right. long. <laughs> so I think that just. Um, educating our community and letting them know, just really understanding, like, and from my standpoint too, I know like 2% of code. So I understand how code works. I can like read some of it. Like I can, I can look at it. I, I've done a little tiny bit, but when it comes to like making a computer game, my brain is like, what, how does that work? And so I know that it takes a long time. I know that they're just they're talking in computer and they're trying to to make it so that something is like playable and awesome. And it just doesn't always go as well as this plan. And I think that the best way for us to move forward and we do, do a really good job at this, I feel like, is to let people know, be like, ah, there was a snag. We were hoping that it was going to be here. They hit something. They're trying to fix that because they don't want to release it beforehand. And then I also like to remind people that before all of this, before this whole community crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, like getting people from the community to work on things and, and make your project awesome together, everything happened behind closed doors in somebody's basement. So somebody would work on a project or a game secretly by themselves for five plus years. Nobody would know about it. And then it would just boom, come out because they'd already gone through all of that stuff behind closed doors. And what we're doing is totally new. We're doing it all out in the open. We're telling people our idea. As soon as we walk down into the basement, we're like, we got this idea. We're going to try this out. And we're like, we're going to get Joe Bob down the street to come down to the basement and help us out now. And that is all out in the open. And that's what I think makes people more antsy because they never had to see that before. They never had to be around waiting. They just suddenly a new game came out by the new game company because it was already done and it had already been in production for probably more than five years. And so that's what we're looking at too. We're really early on in everything. And um, yeah, as long as we can convey that to the community and to the public, I think that we'll be all right because people will start to understand. You know, I think that we we do need to commend the team for exactly what you were saying and uh the expectations while high are being managed fantastic you guys had that um that town star uh contest and there was all mm -hmm. kinds of glitches involved with that and <laughs> i just you know i'm i'm looking i'm reading the discord and i'm putting my my head in my hands and i'm like oh my god this is like turning into a nightmare and between you and Bitbender and everybody that was involved with that, jumped on it, was proactive, got the situations resolved. I was beyond impressed. And I think that really brought, at least for me, my level of confidence way up. I'm like, look, it, a lot of times when you when you have these things, people will come in and they'll go, oh, well, it's a problem. We'll figure it out later. And there's like nothing. And, and everybody's just standing there wondering what's going on. You guys, I mean, I, I was really impressed with how that was handled and how you guys are, are standing ahead of that. So when you when you bring that forward with these other projects, these other games, uh, I really think that you're in a really strong position to uh, give that confidence that people are going to need when, uh, as Faz was talking about, you're spending a thousand, two thousand dollars on these NFTs. I think we need to, to reiterate to the community, look what they've done when there has been issues. Mm-hmm. 
And that was a big thing to me, the town star thing. Oh, it was so stressful. <laughs> uh, so like when it when the bug happened initially, I was like, because I really feel like I've already mentioned how much I love the community. And like, I'm really there for them. So I went into our uh a special slack for our a gala team and i was like everybody we need you all in the discord we need everybody to know that we are working on this um normally it's just like me and bitbender but then we got eric to come in and like grab everybody and i was like really they just need to know that we're working on this and that we're doing this for them and the whole point of this is for them for the community and without the community there would literally be no gala games and so i wanted to make it very clear that yes this issue was happening. Yes, we are still in beta and we were very much hoping to be able to leave beta in Townstar during that competition. And we just couldn't. We're still fixing a bunch of bugs and we're fixing stuff. And so we, the community is so important to do this and to find the bugs and to have a bunch of people playing at one time so that, you know, something breaks. We want it to break when there's 8,000 people playing so that it doesn't break when there's a million people playing. Like we need that. And we, we really, really appreciate that. And I like, I think it's really important that we just stay on top of things. And I agree. I think that in the, when the new games come out, if there are little bugs or things that happen, then we'll be right on there and right on top of it. And like, even in the middle of the night, like I was, during that issue, there was not a lot of sleep. Like I like took like we took turns. So like at like one o'clock in the morning, I was like, you guys, I've been up all night answering questions. Can someone take over now? And then someone did. Someone came in and like took over night shift for me so that I could wake up the next morning and come back to it to make sure that the community didn't ever feel left at any time because we never want them to feel like that. Because again, Without the community, there wouldn't be gala games. And that's the whole point, again, of decentralization. We're all supposed to be doing this together. And we're all kind of an important little part. Even if you're somebody who never buys an NFT, you're still important to this community. And that is what we really want to get across to everyone. I think I think the epicness uh, of how they interact with the community is perfect because you don't get that. And uh, Carrie, I know you mentioned a little while back that uh, Discord channels can cannot be, you know, as as fun as yeah. <laughs> the gala community. I, I was in one uh, earlier this year, and I finally left because it, it was just full of rude people. And it, gala and the people that are there are tremendous at being able to interact and giving that community a sense of purpose and making people feel like they're part of something bigger. And that's where I think you're going to find a lot of success in the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. And that's been probably why they hired me on because that was the song that I was always singing that, you know, we need to do this together and that makes it easier for everyone. Well, I'd like to switch up to uh, a different subject because I think we've mm -hmm. we've gone pretty far with the community, and I wanted I wanted to get back to uh, to you, Carrie. I'm told that you're a hardcore NFT collector. I have a lot of them, <laughs> but maybe not like in the traditional sense that the mainstream people do. So, like I have already mentioned, um, I've been around in blockchain and crypto for about almost six years. Gosh, it seems like I'm so old. Everything makes me feel old. Um, and I started on not Bitcoin and not Ethereum and not Litecoin. Like I'd say those are the top three that most people know about. But instead, I ended up finding this little community, this little blockchain um, called Steam and uh, created by Dan Larimer. And um, it, it was a blogging platform. So I, I felt like that could be my jam and you just, you, you get paid or you get paid in upvotes and for making posts. So like people would, it's called curating and you would read somebody's posts. And if you were staking a certain amount of steam at the time, then you would have upvote value that you could just basically give away. Like, so it didn't cost you anything. It was kind of like interest that you were holding and then you could upvote and give somebody money on that. And so I really started getting into this. Uh, community and learning about NFTs and different just blockchain crypto. Um, Steam changed into Hive. It forked off. And so that's where Splinterlands, the blockchain that Splinterlands lives on now. It used to, Splinterlands used to be Steam Monsters. And 
I also, so I have a pretty substantial NFT collection at Splinterlands. Um, I started with nothing there though. So like I didn't put any real money into Splinterlands. Like my 10, um, actually I think I got a free account because at first when it first came out, they were, they were just free. Like they were just giving everybody free so they could start playing. Um, but I used my income from my blog posting from crypto and I transferred that and that's how I purchased cards and packs and started to like build up and just earn rewards by playing and so now I actually looked yesterday and I think my card collection and it's by far not the biggest by any means but it's uh seventy six hundred dollars just in my Splinterlands cards and um so that's pretty fun and it keeps rising all the time. So even when the market goes down, <laughs> those cards just hold their value because they're not connected to anything else because they're right there on the high blockchain. So I know that a lot of people, when they think NFT, they think like OpenSea. I have never done a transaction on OpenSea because quite frankly, gas can kiss it. I think that's a weird <laughs> thing. Um, yes. And again, the reason I think gas is weird is because Steam doesn't have that and Hive doesn't have that and also EOS. So Dan Larimer created Steam. Um, Hive was in Forks, so it's the same code. And then Dan, as he does, if you know anything about him, he leaves, he, he makes a project and then he like lets it go and then he starts a new project because his brain is insane. And so like then he's also the creator of EOS.io. Um, so all of the issues that he saw with Steam, which there definitely were some uh, for decentralization and voting and how things work. Uh, he kind of like fixed those and like made them a little bit better when moving to EOS. And, and I'm not really in the EOS community, but it's very similar. So it's a blogging platform with other capabilities of putting games on it um, and all just different sorts of apps or dApps, decentralized applications. So they're called dApps. And I, I really, I got really, really, spoiled because we could trade things we could have our splinterlands nfts at first which was the first um first time that i was you know aware of what that would be like th this is one that is mine it has its own identification this card belongs to me i can sell this card nobody can take this card for me it is belongs in my wallet i have keys that protect that and so the first time like i dealt with it there's no fees like we had penny cards i could just send cards to people back and forth it never cost anything instant transactions three seconds so pretty instant um and it was just fast and free and then as i started getting more outside of the alt space and more inside of the traditional crypto space i guess like of the mainstream people um bitcoin and eth i learned that they were just dealing with this crazy crazy gas fee thing and like i i spent probably a whole evening so several hours just learning about why gas fees and then understanding why other blockchains didn't have to have that um so there's also wax which is um another another free movement basically blockchain so to be very clear to have things on a blockchain and to move things around it is not free it costs everything in life costs regardless of how many people want to whine and complain and say things should be free everything has a cost it's either an energy cost or a monetary cost or something like that so blockchains it's an energy cost and so yes everything does have a cost so when i say free transactions it's not entirely true. So in order to make those transactions free on that sort of blockchain, you have to be staking a certain amount of that token. And so you're kind of paying for it in that way, but you don't lose anything. So you're staking it, which holding that basically means that's holding it in the whole decentralized um, ecosystem, which then allows that money to kind of be I won't, it's not mine because it's not, it's like making new, it's, it's kind of like mind, um, making um, a kind of gas that helps pay for the transactions. So things are still happening, but rather than it just being this finite thing, which is more gas like, where you have to have this specific thing that you pay to make the transaction go through by holding things. And this is how wax works as well. They have something, um, what are they called over there? Every chain has a different name for them. So Ethereum has gas. Um, Hive has staked Hive power. Splinterlands, which uses Hive, they are called resource credits. 
all exactly the same thing. It's how you pay for the transaction using the energy that you're using. And so I just feel, and ETH is trying to fix this. So I'm giving him props. I got faith. I got faith they're going to fix it. Um, but the original way to do it was just to basically charge for that. And the money does go back to the whoever the miners are. And uh, the reason that it goes up and down on the ETH gas blockchain is because supply and demand. The more people trying to run things through, the higher it's going to cost. They're going to take more money from you if you want to get through faster. So it's basic economics on that side of things. Um, but there is going to be a way in the future... I think on the ETH blockchain or secondary or second um, layer solutions that are, it's going to really ease that pain of that and let more people trade. Um, Wax, which is Atomic Hub or yeah, Atomic Hub.io. I call it Atomic Chub because it's spelled the same in my brain. Um, but they're also free, basically transactions, but you do have to stake stuff and move things around. And I do think that as what I'm looking at on these other, you know, quote, free chains, people are going to have to start staking more to be able to interact on it. And so, so it won't be fully free where you're going to have to be like holding things um, to be able to make things work. But it's going to be it's a lot nicer than paying $80 to mint one item that costs $5, which I think really does hold people back in the NFT space. So my NFTs, I have a substantial COGS collection um, on Wax, which is atomichub.io. I have a bunch of other random things on Wax too. I have a pretty good collection <laughs> over there. Um, COGS are cool if you guys have never heard of them. It's keys, um, keys of other games. And so the idea is POGS, if you guys are the right age to remember those <laughs> um <laughs> they were like my jam i love pogs i loved like playing in the schoolyard and like having my my sweet awesome slammers um so basically they're a, a digitalized version of that which are cogs and then they're gonna have utility in the future uh to be able to play other games so i was stoked to get in on that project and really you know i threw i was like here take my money um and so yeah i do have a lot of things like that but i don't I have zero NFTs on, well, not zero on Ethereum because I do have some, I have Mirandas and Townstar things. So I guess I do have some NFTs on Ethereum. Well, I think we have our new uh, NFT expert for the NFT show. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like, I quite enjoy them, but I don't know if I'd say expert because again, I'm just being honest, like most people think of NFT and they think of Ethereum and OpenSea and I have never, ever traded there or looked at those things. I like I like my NFTs to have a uh, function, uh, not just art. And no offense to people who have art. I think that side of NFT is awesome. Like it's so cool that particularly on OpenSea, they have that function where you can put up um, some kind of artistic image or a painting or something like that a digital painting and and you you hook a a percentage to that so the artist will always get paid every time that's moved around and that's something that has never even been thought of so like if you were an artist in in real life you create something you get money the first time it's sold and then it might sell 20 more times before you die and you don't get a piece of that what i'm noticing about uh art nfts actually is it's not just paintings anymore it's not just the static yeah. things but they have some really dynamic creations that nobody really would spend a lot of time making if it wasn't for the fact that they could present it as an nft i mean who's going to make a you know a, a really cool animated picture just to put it out there people don't have the they time won't. for that yeah but but if they could make money doing that there's some really cool animated NFTs going on right now, or not just like animations but as much as paintings that look alive. You'll see things in the background yeah. that move, and some are, are dynamic. They, they're never the same because it, maybe they might be using an algorithm or something. Yeah, and I think those are cool. And I do actually think that like tr more traditional artists are doing that just so that they can, you know, make some money and still be able to create their thing that they want on their actual physical easel that they have at home that no one's necessarily going to buy because this new digital art thing is the way. And so they're really just trying to fall into that niche where they can, you know, make a buck and still be able to do what they like to do and be able to be creative. Uh, they also have uh, a lot of NFTs. It's a little harder, but to do music and video, like there was a new music hosting site 
trip T sip, I think, um, for NFTs. Uh, and that, again, that's a little harder because it, you have to host that. So somebody has to pay for that space. So a lot of times they're trying to use IPFS so that they can, um, they can host that a little easier in an, in a shared capacity, uh, rather than like, like right now, OpenSea they have a very limited, a size of file that you can upload. So you can make baby gifts. And so that's basically what you're describing is people create artwork that kind of moves and comes alive, but they still have to keep it at a pretty low amount of megabytes to be able to upload even that on to OpenSea. Well, uh, I know that uh, uh, Titan wants to get to a lot of different subjects. Uh, got anything, Titan? I could, I'm, I have more questions along the NFT line, but you know. Well, um, you know, you can talk your your NFT. Uh, the only subject I wanted to go into next, I know we've been going here for almost an hour. Um, I, I did want to talk a little about the background inside Gala and how the team meshes together. You mentioned you have a couple of uh, back channels for talking with each other and the coordination. I mean, wh what is it? What is it like? on a daily basis what i mean you imagine like sitting on this side of the discord you'll imagine hey there's a bunch of people typing things all day long and that's got to be like really <laughs> boring uh what do you do all day so there is a lot of typing but it's totally different than what anyone could imagine so it is very much like a big extended family. Um, I I love it so much. So I joined, I was number 27 uh, employee and we are at 50 people now, but every week we have two all hands meetings. So on Mondays and Fridays, the whole team gets together in a Zoom call and we all see each other's faces and we all get to see what's up and what's going on. And we do uh, highlights from the main team, like the le team leaders of what we're going to work on that week. And then on Fridays, we have super fun time <laughs> where we get to know each other. Um, Fridays are actually, they're so fun. So we've been doing these like meet or ready player one, meet your, meet your other um employees kind of things where you just get to know about other people and we don't we we ask you know what you do for the team what your day-to-day -day looks like when you're working with certain people and then like what you like to do and other things that have nothing to do with work and so we really get to know each other um as like a regular day for me i spend like i said a lot of time in discord and i talk to jason a lot but as for just typing um, a lot of times we're on phone calls or we're in zoom chats or we're in video things. So we actually see each other. So we'll pop in and we'll be like, send a message to somebody that you need something. And instead of just typing back and forth, we're like, Hey, you want to pop on a call? So we actually hear each other. It's, it's almost like we're just in a real office building together, working together and always staying on the same page. And everybody within, we have a, we have a Slack channel. So we all have access to everybody at any time. We have really, we have fun channels too. So like we have all the serious things where like, you know, we're doing work in these channels and then we have a random channel and our gaming channel and our side channel where we talk about anything or just jokes. Like if I think something is funny, then I'll just go into the random channel. And sometimes those channels are just hilarious. And I really feel like that makes it seem like, you know, we're, we're part of this together. It feels more like, you know, I'm in an office building and I'm like walking by Sam and I'm like, Oh, Hey, Oh. And like, I can like, you know, like we have our little conversations and I feel real connected and we all have our our faces on our pictures and our avatars. So it does feel very personable, not at all like you would assume uh, an online business might be. Uh, and the goal, Eric has said over and over again, that we don't ever want to be uh, corporate style where it kind of gets away from that, even as we grow and our intention is to grow. So we do really try to be really friendly and everybody... This is a fun thing too. Um, everybody that's a part of a team, part of the team, they would have to be somebody who you would want to play D and D with. Like that has been specifically said. So, and I actually was brought on before I was became an official member. I played D and D with 
four members of the team. And like, that's kind of like a test. It's like, if it's somebody that you can have a beer with and you can really like get to know and be friends with, and they're good at what they're going to be coming in to do, then that's who that we want on the team. And that's who we want to be communicating with. So it's a completely different environment than any environment that I've ever, ever worked in, in real life or virtually. That's awesome. I mean, your dynamic personality, uh, I'm sure that uh, all those things <laughs> that you guys talk about, we would love to see. We need we need like a, uh, a room in Discord where some of that gets released. I think people <laughs> yeah. would have fun with that. Um, we've been going forever and Carrie, we could talk to you for hours. Uh, we'd love to have you back to, to get deeper on some of these things. One thing that uh, we, we like to end with is finding something out about the person that we're talking to that people wouldn't normally know. So for all the Carrie Allen fans out there, uh, what are you willing to share with us that your fans would never guess about you? Never guess? I don't know. Huh. Be careful now. They, this recording. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like, don't say anything <laughs> bad. Like, most of the things, I guess a lot of the things people wouldn't know about me because they, you just wouldn't be able to guess it. But this one, I guess it's kind of crazy. But I got really, really sick um, in 20, 2004. 2003. Um, I had to leave school. I almost died. I couldn't walk for a couple of years. And then I decided I wanted to live and I came back and now I'm cool. So it was a big deal. You might not even get to be around me if I didn't have the will. And I've always been very happy. So even when it was really bad, I was still like, I'm cool. It's fine. <laughs> so that's something that nobody really knows. Um, that, yeah, I had a really, really hard time in college at first in university and I got super sick and I had to leave and uh, it was it was rough going for a while there but then you know I pulled myself up by my bootstraps and I uh, I could talk a whole show on like all of what happened there um, but yeah so I think the moral of my story is as long as you don't give up and you know that there's you know somebody out there that's gonna be helpful or somebody that your story might help then just do that just keep on going. And so I get to be here now and I'm stoked that I didn't give up and I'm stoked that my life is what it is. So, Oh, we're all glad you're here too. That's, that's really awesome that, that you were able to overcome that. I think we all have moments like that in our life where you look back and you go, boy, uh, you know, we made some choices and it's about living life to the fullest and you start to appreciate things a little bit more and a little bit differently after something like that happens. Yep, it's true. So yeah, just keep hanging on. That's what I tell people. <laughs> oh, and I can say my alphabet backwards. So all right, now you got to do it. Uh, no, no, I, I okay. can say the alphabet as one word, but, but go ahead. You do yours first. as one word. Okay, so mine is backwards. It's Z-Y-X-W-V-U-T-S-R-Q-P-O-N-M-L-K-J-I-H-G-F-E-D-C-B-A. Now, did you learn that in case you got pulled over for DUI? Or? <laughs> no. Although. <laughs> that's, that's one of the questions useful. they ask you. <laughs> no way, is it? Is it yeah, it is. That's messed yeah. up. So the reason I learned it was, do you guys remember... Uh, Bob Saget hosting the show uh, with like the funny video, funniest videos. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Some little kid, some there was a section on there. Um, I remember as a kid, there was a kid that did that, and I was like, "What? I'm gonna do that!" <laughs> and then I did. I got my special skill from Big Bird of Sesame Street, and the Heck way yeah. you pronounce the alphabet is Abic Defki Jekyll Nockwars Tuvixes. Oh my God, that's hilarious. And, uh, <laughs> Bravo. Do it too. Oh, that was there's awesome. There's a song. Look it up on the internet. There's a song. I will. Oh my God. Every time you say it, it's greater. Well, because you can. <laughs> All right. Well, now you're the expert on backwards alphabet, Carrie. So now you've got to come to up with how to say it backwards, right? Yes, I will do that. Well, I can you know, also I'm not do the alphabet. The... I'm not even pronouncing it right. It's Abkadepki instead of Abkadepki. Ab but, you know, it's my, Ab my regional accent. Right, right. Yes. And then also <laughs> something I bet you guys can do too 
because you're from the United States. But I bet you can say all of your states in alphabetical order because everybody learned the state song, right? Uh, no, see, that's no. new. <laughs> no way. We're, we're, we're old. All right. We didn't have that that state. song. <laughs> Uh, song. I was, uh, yeah, there's a song. So at there's work, song, they did yeah. this. Yeah, they did this at work. Uh, during my day job, the, there's a bunch of younger people I work with, and they're over there and they're talking about this state song. I'm like, what in the world are you talking about? And they're looking at me like I'm nuts. And I said, okay, so explain this to me. And they're like, oh, yeah, we, we did it with the capitals and we did it with the states. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, go ahead, let's let's hear it. And they did this. And I said, I never learned that ever, no. That's so funny. Yeah, I thought just everyone did. And so when, also another, because I like, I like 90s sitcoms, they're my jam. But like on Friends, there was the episode where um, they were trying to do the 50 states and like <laughs> Ross was having hella, tr hella trouble trying to remember the 50 states. And like, you know, of course he's Ross, so he wanted to be able to do it. And like I sit down from just not even thinking about it since I was a kid and learning the state song. And I sat down and I was able to go through and write them all down. Um, and I felt very good about myself. So I feel like we learned that song pretty young. I think it's because uh, uh, Titan and I are of the Friends generation. I, I don't think we're as old as uh, they are. Ah, yes. But uh, we're yeah, pretty close. Yeah, so you're a little older. I, I am also, man, I don't know if I want to out myself that much, but I do... This year, in four months, I turn Don't do old. It. Don't say it. Because I turn then, old uh, this year. <laughs> people have their, their visions of who you are I and know. how you are. And <laughs> if you're old, then you're going to ruin it for them. I know. And I said that the other day. I was like, I feel like people think I'm way younger than I am. And I'm just going to run with that. I'm cool you know, with that. You know, my kids, <laughs> they, they, they compliment me every day. And I don't think they realize it. They're like, Dad, you're just like us. You know, you're Aww, they, they, other nice. kids' parents are are old, and you're just like us. You're an old person that acts young. And I'm like, that's well, the not sweetest compliment ever. Did you cry a little and hug them and give them more allowance? <laughs> no, I think of all the times where I. It's when they say that I start thinking of all the times when I had to be the adult and we're <laughs> you know punishing them and so on. So, so there's a little guilt there actually. <laughs> That's okay. That means they like you and you did something right. Don't want to be their friend all the time. That makes you better. It's true. But yeah, you should learn your alphabet song so that you know the alphabet. So when people ask you at a bar to name all the states, you can, if for only that reason. I I memorize crazy stuff like that. And we could, we could have a whole podcast just going on the crazy, stupid things that I've learned. They've as a kid. Done. Yes, I love it so much. <laughs> All right. Well, so it sounds like we better wrap this up. Um, and uh, I'm just going to end it. Any last words? Um, let's see. Everybody be awesome. Be nice to each other. Join the Go Gala Games Discord because <laughs> we're super fun over here. And uh, if you ever have any questions, I am available everywhere. So in Discord, I'm very quick to answer, but you can find me all over the place. And um, my door is always open to anybody. 